Okay, so, so uh, Tom, the next drug we expect to come along for relapse remitting disease is going to be cladribine, approved already in Europe, um, tested some time ago, uh, but then brought back to the regulators for reconsideration. Tell us a bit about the, the data set there and where we might think we'd be using it. So, as you mentioned, oral cladribine has had a relatively long development with some discontinuity during the development. At this point in time, we have essentially uh, three, respectively, four data sets uh, supporting this medication. The first one is a trial in a first event in a CIS population, or CIS slash early MS population, that's the Oracle trial. We have the Clarity study as a second one, but then very importantly, uh, more recently reported the Clarity extension. And we have, because of the duration of the whole development, a relatively robust uh, underlying data set from a follow-up registry the, uh, that gives uh, the premier registry that gives a lot of information regarding the long-term or longer-term safety of the agent. Uh, the Oracle trial studied, uh, as we have previously discussed, uh, the first event patients, the patients with the first attack. And in this particular study, there was a very significant difference between the patients on placebo, respectively with the patients that were early on treated. And it also led to a decrease of the patients that actually had McDonald MS uh, by, by fulfilling next lesions. And I'm talking about the 2005 criteria for uh, the diagnosis of multiple sclerosis. The second study, the Clarity Clarity Extension, is interesting because with cladribine, tab uh, cladribine tablets, the patient gets a course of tablets in the first year and the course of tablets in the second year. The two courses are two one-week courses set apart by one month. That's the totality of the treatment. At the two-year mark, this led to a very significant reduction of the relapse rate and also attenuation of the disability product, uh, progression. Interestingly, in the extension study of the Clarity study, there were patients attributed to ongoing treatment with cladribine, annual cycles, and there were patients that didn't get any further treatments in year three and four. And the patients in the always treated, so four annual courses, did comparatively about the same as the patients that had no further treatment in year three and year four following the treatment. So this raises then the question whether or not uh, an agent such as cladribine that leads to uh, targeted transient reduction of B and T cells, whether such an agent actually could lead to an immune, a selective immune reconstitution, where essentially the uh, cells that are autoreactive get partially eliminated and then a non-autoreactive immune system would be repopulated. Where is this agent ultimately going to fit into our armamentarium? That depends a little bit where it ultimately will be indicated by the FDA. But the data sets that are there will potentially justify a use in early patients based on the Oracle CIS trial. But it certainly also would indicate a patients with uh, activity, with higher than uh, the average activity uh, in the relapsing forms of multiple sclerosis.